When Stonewall Jackson was a young man at West Point, he kept a book of maxims that he would write down favorite sayings and quotes in. And one of them particularly stuck out for him. You may be whatever you resolve to be. And that was a quote that really sums up the way he approached his entire life. Through that sense of resolve, he could make himself into whatever he resolved to be. He came from very humble beginnings in what was then Western Virginia, in Clarksburg. There, he was orphaned at a very early age, but that sense of resolve shaped him into a fine, upstanding young man in the community, where he was even elected constable. He was raised by bachelor uncles, but that sense of resolve helped him not to live in an animal house-like environment, but instead be respectable and have a sense of business, how to handle horses. That sense of resolve shaped him into such a fine young man that he earned an appointment to the West Point Military Academy, where he found himself woefully underprepared for the education that they offered him. But again, that sense of resolve helped him buckle down and become an excellent student. He went from being near the bottom of his class over the course of four years to being near the top. Classmates said that if they'd had to go for a fifth year, he would have been the top student because of that dedication and resolve. After graduation, like so many of his classmates, he was sent off to the Mexican War, where that sense of resolve helped him do his duty under fire. He was eventually commended three separate times by the General in Chief of the Army for work that he did on the battlefield under fire, and that sense of resolve putting him where he needed to be in the crucible of battle. After the war, he took a job with the Virginia Military Institute because they needed a war hero. There they asked him to teach natural history and philosophy, today what we would call physics. Jackson was woefully underprepared to teach physics, but that sense of resolve pushed him to improve over the course of a 10-year career. And so students went from calling him Tom Fool to actually respecting him at the end of that decade. Might also be because his other subject was artillery, and there Jackson was a genius. You couldn't find better artillery instruction anywhere in the country than you could at VMI from Major Thomas Jackson. Then Civil War broke out. Jackson initially opposed secession, but once Virginia seceded, he went with his home state. In July of 1861, that sense of resolve put him on the crest of Henry House Hill. There stands Jackson like a stone wall. Let us resolve to die here and we shall conquer. And as the Confederate line reformed around him, the tide of battle turned and the Confederates won the day. Even as Jackson won one of the most famous nicknames in military history, Stonewall Jackson. That sense of resolve would drive him up and down to the Shenandoah Valley in the spring of 1862, where he would defeat three armies that outnumbered him more than three to one, covering distances so vast, so quickly, that his men earned the nickname Jackson's Foot Cavalry. When he teams up with Robert E. Lee, they string together a series of victories that have been called a model partnership, turning the tide of the war in the East. But that sense of resolve also puts Jackson in May of 1863 in a spot no lieutenant general should be, between the lines doing reconnaissance on May 2nd during the Battle of Chancellorsville. He finds himself accidentally wounded by his own men, that sense of resolve driving him to push forward an attack that had bogged down under darkness. So perhaps Jackson's resolve, that guiding principle, might also have been his fatal flaw. We ask you to consider Jackson's words for yourself, because you too may be whatever you resolve to be.